Hello, this is Gary Schnitke, and this is a five-minute farm doc daily dealing with production from double crop soybean systems. Double crop systems have re received a great deal of attention here lately for three reasons. Number one, the Ukraine-Russian war. Wheat and double crop soybeans is a way to get additional wheat into our production system next year, so it's seen as a way of increasing wheat for 2023. Wheat also is a cover crop with a return. We have an emphasis of putting cover crops into our rotations to reduce nitrate runoff. We also have a strategic yield challenge. Over time, U.S. has lost grain production relative to other parts of the world. Double crop may be a way to increase production. We looked here at double crop soybean systems and compared them to corn and soybeans. And we did this based on two measures, calories per acre. Remember that corn is a feed grain. Its primary purpose is to produce energy and crude protein per acre. Crude protein is a measure of obviously protein and soybeans is an oil seed and it's designed to produce protein. As we're looking at this comparison, we'll start with central Illinois. We're using a yield of 228 bushels per acre, and that will produce 19.9, almost 20 million kilocalories per acre. So corn is the way to produce calories from an acre. It will also produce 1328 pounds of crude protein. Soybeans, 71 bushels per acre would produce 8.6 million calories. That is obviously less than the calories from corn, but it produces more crude protein, 1704 per acre. Our wheat double crop soybeans, and again, these would be yields representative of central Illinois, 88 bushels for wheat, 48 bushels of soybeans, that would produce 13.6 million calories. That's more than soybeans, but less than corn. It would produce 1733 crude, um, pounds of crude protein per acre. That actually is more than soybeans. But remember, some of those uh, pounds of crude protein come from the wheat in the uh, wheat in the rotation. We then looked at different rotations and calculated average yield or average energy and average crude protein from those rotations and put those averages on this graph just to give you a feel for where those rotations come out. Our standard rotation is corn and soybeans and that located at zero on the energy axis and zero on the crude protein axis. That corn soybeans is 50-50 over a two-year rotation. Corn has much more energy, 40% more energy than corn and soybeans. Soybeans has 40% less. However, soybeans have more protein, and it's 12% more for soybeans, 12% less for corn. Wheat double crop soybeans actually produces a bit less energy, but, but more protein than that corn-soybean rotation. So it is up and to the left of the corn-soybean rotation. A couple other rotations of interest would be a corn-soybeans wheat double crop soybean rotation. So this would be a three-year rotation. Again, we're putting these values on, on, on average per year. That rotation produces a little bit less energy than a corn-soybean rotation, but more protein, about 5% more. If we want to use wheat double crop soybeans and produce more acre, uh, energy, we would eliminate the soybean part of it and give a two-year rotation of corn, wheat, double crop soybeans, and that would put us at more energy and more protein than our corn soybean rotation. Finally, if we want more protein, we would put uh, take corn out of the rotation and have soybeans, wheat double crop soybeans, and that would have less energy and more protein. These values are for central Illinois, high productivity land. We also did this for southern Illinois, and basically the same results except we had more wheat double crop soybean to the right and above the corn-soybean rotation. So those rotations both increase more energy 
and more protein than a corn-soybean rotation given where yields are at in southern Illinois. That area is also where we see more wheat double crop soybeans in the rotation. There are several implications of this. The first is our wheat double crop soybean rotation or adding that practice will likely be dictated by prices and the shortages due to Ukraine-Russia conflict and those prices will will or will not bring in wheat double crop soybeans but it will be a strictly a price issue. In the longer run, however, there isn't that much advantage to putting in wheat double crop soybeans, particularly in a central Illinois situation. As we add wheat double crop, we would likely lower the price of wheat because wheat's first use will be as a food, flour for pastries. Second use for, will be for feed for livestock. The minute it becomes feed for livestock, it has to be, compete with corn price or corn for a part in that rotation, and that will typically run those, uh, ration, th those prices down for wheat relative to corn. In the longer run, if we want to see wheat double crop soybeans, additional research likely needs to occur for that rotation, and there's three things that you can think about doing. First is to develop wheat varieties that can be harvested earlier. We develop wheat varieties that could be harvested in the middle of June rather than late June, early July. We increase the times double crop soybeans are out in the field and likely the yield of double crop soybeans. We could also develop wheat varieties that yield better, and that would increase the attractiveness of the wheat double crop soybean rotation, or we could increase double crop soybean yields. That may have an issue because if you increase double crop soybean yields, you are also probably increasing soybean yields, which would cause a relative um, Relative comparison to not be as favorable for wheat double crop soybeans. You can read more about this topic in the Farm Doc Daily. Link to the video description below.